Hi, welcome back to the show. I'm your host, Dr. Keneal Joyce, and this is Allowed. I'm joined today by my beautiful friend and sometimes collaborator. Uh, we coach together, we, we consult together. This is Miss Anjani Bhargava. Good morning, my sweet. Good morning, how are you? I'm really well, it's so good to see you. Me too. So I'd love if you could tell us a little bit about yourself in your own words. Sure. Um, I've had just kind of a varied tapestry of, of background. So I'm an organizational psychologist by design or by, by start. Um, I've worked with Fortune 100 companies in executive roles and then interspersed that with various bits of different types of consulting. And now I'm an executive coach working with CEOs and their teams of any stage companies, startups, high growth, or even Fortune 500. Mm -hmm. So one thing I do know about you and your work is that when, you know, when I hear those words of Fortune 100 and executive mm -hmm. coaching, consulting, mm -hmm. it sounds, I think, a little more buttoned up than I experience mm -hmm. you. <laughs> and, um, you know, to me, you bring so much like depth mm. and heart and soul into your work. It's a little less traditional than I think mm -hmm. it might sound from the outside. Can you talk about how you how you developed into this version of who you are right now? Mm. Such a great question, because I, I asked myself that question, too. I think I've always been a real depth oriented person and I've been on my own uh, life journey of development. Um, and I think as time and life unfolds, you just, you start asking yourself what's real and what's not. And so there were absolutely versions of myself where it felt very like on the ladder and buttoned up. And, you know, I hit, I hit that mountain. I was a chief HR officer for mm -hmm. a company and, you realize that that's not the glory that you seek and mm. the glory that you seek is actually really learning who you are and all the, the different aspects of who you are and how you relate to people and the authenticity by which you relate. And mm. that's what it's about. And even in the context of organizations, big, small, or whatever, like that's why we exist <laughs> not to, you know, play the game. Like mm -hmm. the game is really irrelevant. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the game of winning? The game of anything, the game of winning, the game of climbing, the game of posturing, the game of politics, the game of putting aside who you are for who you need to be, mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. game of what's expected of you. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's so beautiful because I see the connection of, of everything you're sharing mm. with the very way that you actually do help teams to win the game. Mm. Mm -hmm. And it's like, there's a paradox there. It's you, you kind of are coming in through the human side to in a very a beautifully structured way that we're going to get into mm. to really create high performance team environments and mm -hmm. high performing leaders. So I want to talk more about the nitty gritty of that. And first, I want to just share a story. So I mean, last night, we exchanged a few Vox results. So Anjani and I, uh, for the listeners, we are we're working on a project together right now for a, a client and um, uh, Voxer is this app where you can leave each other these really long up to 15 minute long uh, voice messages. Mm -hmm. Um, we love it. We use it all the time. It's, mm -hmm. it's a great way to have an asynchronous conversation. Um, uh, but it feels synchronous because it's, it's someone's voice in a very relaxed, uh, tone, just like you'd have mm -hmm. in a conversation. So sometimes because Anjani is in Chicago, here I am in Los Angeles, we're working on projects. We've both got little kids. Um, we don't want to schedule meetings. We don't need to schedule. Mm -hmm. So this is how we, you know, share ideas, ask questions, get feedback about, you know, challenge each other. So last night, um, we were sharing some notes about this project. And I remember you sharing something with me about, you know, what might be going on in, in my own coaching. Mm. And this is something that you've done for me really frequently. And I experienced it as a combination of like supporting um, and coaching me 
but also there's a, a way that you really challenge me. Hmm. And, you know, our backgrounds are, are different in, in many ways. Um, mm. And you've spent much more time in corporate environments and I've spent mm. much more time in smaller startups. Mm. So your perspective, I love your confidence in how you direct me. But last night we're sharing this exchange and I'm, by the way, guys, I'm like in the middle of like the most chaotic move process ever. I am, I've moved locations with my family like a couple times in the last couple of weeks. We're dealing with like remodeling. It's just, you know, we're in a rental. Literally, I rearranged my studio this morning. So it's it's a bit like crazy a over lot. here. Yeah. <laughs> like the past two nights when we've been sharing these notes, I've been like, I just can't. I just I just can't yeah. like even put together a coherent thought at and this time of night. And it's usually like at uh, ten o'clock my time, eight o'clock your time. Yeah, yeah. And <laughs> yeah, we're like after we the just kids put the kids to bed. Yeah. 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 So we're tired. So yeah. uh you know, but what you shared is um, maybe you need to drive the conversation more. Mm. Mm. And I think I responded to all the parts of your Vox, except for mm. that comment. Mm. Mm. But when I woke up this morning, it was like ringing in my ears. And I'm mm. like, that's the truth. Mm. And I don't even know how you know that because you have never been in those conversations. Mm. How do you know it? I don't know. I, you know, I think there's a lot to be said for intuitive knowing, but also like, Camille, I think where you and I also connect is we we're both, we're both scientists. We're, we've both gotten for our doctorate. You finished, mm -hmm. you finished mm -hmm. yours, right? Mm -hmm. I yeah. did not. I did not. Uh, but like, we're oriented that way. So like, give me a bunch of fluff, fluff stuff mm -hmm. without any tie back to science mm -hmm. and it, I really struggle right but on this one the intuitive nature I've been thinking about that a lot and it makes it makes sense like I think that I can see that because I've had all these different experiences right I sit on boards I of startup companies I have worked with fortune 500 boards I have worked with big teams small teams so like all that stuff is in my brain as disparate information and just the patterns of how our brains work, right? Neurons that wire together, fire together. Like that's mm -hmm. my sciencey side. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It just, it just zaps together because of all these experiences that form this tapestry. And so I have a way of just seeing, and I wouldn't call it intuitive seeing like some kind of weird thing that I'm not in control of, but this mm -hmm. like projecting outward of the, if this, then that, if this, mm -hmm. then that. Mm -hmm. um, and mm -hmm. I think, I think that's what it is. And I think the other thing that I pride myself on, and I'm sure everyone else does this, but, but this is just for me, is when I work with, whether it's an individual, a team or an entity, the minute I decide to start working with them, they get all of me mm. all the time. Right. And so my objective is to be in full service. Yeah. All the time, always. And so I don't know, like, I think just that mindset creates this, like, I'm almost a part of them. Mm -hmm. I don't know. That's the best I can explain it. You think you're choking up almost. No, it's just, I don't know how else to put it into words. Yeah. Like it just, it means so much to me to be a part of their experience and mm -hmm. a part of their journey. Mm -hmm. And as coaches, you know, we have to be careful of that because we are as a, a prior podcaster of yours, David, mm -hmm. as he says, self is instrument, right? People aren't yeah. paying for our genius or our wisdom or even our ability to ask questions they're they're paying for us and the energy we bring and the space that we hold so our we have being, to watch mm -hmm. our being and not just our doing doing yeah very well said yes. yeah yes yeah i uh diana chapman taught mm. me about these two pillars of coaching mm. and the first pillar is the being mm-hmm is how you be. And the second pillar is all of your technologies, your tools, yeah. your frameworks, your question asking craft, all content of that. Content versus context. Right? Totally. Yeah. So um, yeah, that 
that's something else I feel like I've, I've learned from you in the past couple of months is um, just allowing myself to surrender more, mm. um, even, even more of myself and less time boxing of it and much more just what's needed what's needed that's, now that's something that i've learned from you because i remember when we first started working together it's like okay what are we doing and what do we need to plan for and and you beautifully said you're like no we just we do the dance together and we we're so comfortable with each other mm -hmm. that it's just gonna organically flow and play out and like i have no need to plan and it was the first time that anyone's ever said that to me right like mm -hmm. We don't need to plan. It doesn't matter. Throw it all up in the air because that's just not what it what it's about. So I love, I mean, I'm gonna use your word, like you you've allowed me to rest into that. Mm -hmm. And the times when we do that, it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Every time. I think it may have to do with our personality types too, that that works well mm -hmm. for us. And it mm -hmm. doesn't it doesn't feel good to a lot of people to work mm -hmm. that way. So I'm, it's for me, it's it's a requirement because I find that when I over plan, mm -hmm. I really um, cramp myself, mm -hmm. not because my plans are wrong, but because the energy of planning is sure. antithetical to how yeah. I show up. Um, totally. <laughs> thinking I can predict where something is going to go and that my prediction is going to be more in service than being present with what actually is going on. Mm -hmm. That doesn't work for me personally so whenever i've over planned something <laughs> it doesn't go very well and i overcomplicate. um i feel a sense of time pressure and I, I need to kind of rigidly kind of force things and mm -hmm. control the flow of a conversation you know specifically we're talking about working in intimate you know intense coaching settings mm -hmm. with high level executives so um they know what they're doing mm -hmm. and they lead us just as much as we lead them totally um there's and just such people a would wisdom call that mastery that is mastery, mastery. Mm -hmm. like when you don't need to come in with all your slides and papers and you know it sure is nice that you have that stack of excellent slides though in your, in your back pocket for whenever we need them back pocket yeah. thank you for that yeah so let's get into uh high performance teams so what what does that mean why does it matter whether or not you are a leader on a formal team what what is that about in, in a broader human sense so i think that people want to be in community with other people and even those of us that like to alone ourselves mm. from time to time. <laughs> and as a four, as fellow fours, mm -hmm. we know what that feels like. Yeah, We wanna be in community, especially with people who we think we can do things with. And so when you're in a team, whether your team's your family or your work colleagues, your, you know, your spiritual you know, friends, like, mm -hmm you feel seen, you feel heard, you feel accepted, you feel invited, you feel um, like you have the ability to, you know, act through your genius, right? Mm -hmm. um, doing that in isolation is far more limiting than doing it with others. Yeah. And so I look at team as, as broadly as that of just mm. being in community. And I think humans are wired to be in community. Mm -hmm. And when we don't feel like we're wired to be in community, because for many, many, many years, and you'll hear me saying this, I like to alone myself. Mm -hmm. Part of that is my foreness. Mm -hmm. And part of that is just, you know, for years and years and years, I didn't find my people and my community. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so then you get burned, right? Yeah. You know, um, I love I love that framing that it's about that that basic fundamental human need mm -hmm. to be in community. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, Steven Pinker talks about uh, the, the role of language in mm -hmm. the human mind and mm -hmm. in how we evolved um, mm -hmm. to be able to 
encode thoughts and concepts like abstract concepts mm -hmm. things that are not in the here and now but mm -hmm. talking about things that aren't here and aren't now and maybe never were maybe you're mm -hmm. just purely imaginary right now because they're a, an idea about the future like we can encode all of that into language mm -hmm. to communicate with each other mm -hmm. and that this actually is takes up a massive amount of our our caloric daily intake mm -hmm. is to create language using our mind. Mm -hmm. But the specific purpose of language is so that you and I can coordinate action, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that we can work together. And if we actually couldn't as human beings, we would perish mm -hmm. individually and as groups. Mm -hmm. I love that. Isolation is, is a disease. It is, it is a, it is a, crippling disease that does not work for the human system because we are actually in my view we're actually not individual organisms the way that we often talk about it right. Right. the health of me impacts the health of my whole family and vice versa because actually human the human unit human being is a communal being yeah like teams are actually deeply encoded into our dna yeah and this this yeah. the problems that we run into when we go into organizations and try to work in teams like the thing i love about this work that you and i are so blessed to get to do mm -hmm. and working with people leaders and organizations is it presents you with all of these very fundamental human dilemmas and challenges mm -hmm. that it's every time you start a new team or a new company a new venture it's a new opportunity mm -hmm. to discover more ways that you can grow and learn as a complete mm -hmm. human being Mm. I love so much about that. And what comes up for me is, uh, you know, the three kind of planes that we work on, you can have your IQ, you can have your EQ, but then there's so much also be, to be said for BQ mm. and that energy exchange. And what's BQ? Know, body what's, so EQ, BQ. Body yes. intelligence. So body intelligence. I, IQ, IQ, emotional I, intelligence. So I kind of talk about it as IQ is like how fast those neurons fire, right? And the connectivity of those neurons. EQ is your own awareness of your own emotion and that of others. And BQ is being tapped into your body and the energy of your body. And what's so interesting to me about that is there's so much research now that proves that you can change people's complete states by the way that you show up. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we are absolutely connected, right? It's like, it's like the trees and the root system of the trees and they're all intertwined and they speak to each other. They don't mm -hmm. always have to speak to each other verbally, right? They, mm -hmm. like, whatever, whatever their language is, I guess that could be verbal, but you know, it doesn't have to be verbal. Like there's an mm -hmm. energy exchange mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and my energy and your energy can co-create to get to, you know, um, to amplify or yes. to completely shift and pivot. Oh my gosh, yes. Okay, so this reminds me of when we first met. Mm. Mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> and, and we've debriefed on this before. Yeah. Is, I mean, explain what that was like for you and I'll give my version and, and why this is connected. You mean when we were staring at each other? Yeah. That, that exercise? Mm hmm. Yeah, it was crazy, right? Because what was the what was the prompt? The prompt was just uh, stare at each other, look at each other, and and show the other person not by your your words, but with your hands whether your energy is going up or your connectedness, like your mm -hmm. connectedness, is going up or down, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I remember at one point, because I do have so much love for you and I always have, like that was just the words that I was shooting out through my eyes. And mm -hmm. we weren't even like fully looking at you. It was just eye gazing. Yeah. And I remember your hand just kept going up and up and up and up mm -hmm. and up. And you were, um, you were like brought to tears mm -hmm. almost. Right. And yeah. Yeah, there were no words exchanged. Mm. And it's just I could feel so much love mm -hmm. in you. Mm. And we had we knew of each other before that happened. But that was the first time we got to be together in like an embodied mm -hmm. physical real mm -hmm. world, my yeah. body in the same place as your body. Yeah, it didn't even feel like there was a separation. I think we, we, there was always a magnetism, though, which mm -hmm. is really interesting, you know, mm -hmm. 
when you think about, um, you know, who can I create with? Mm -hmm. And, and that's who I want to be my, my team, you know, whether you're technically on my team in some mm -hmm. kind of formal written sense or, or you're on my, my team, right. You know, right. and I just always knew you were on my team and it mm. was this very natural, um, instinctive, there's a, there's a, like, there's a sexual energy to it, mm -hmm. like a recognition of mm -hmm. this is a person with whom I can create. Create. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Totally. totally. And create in a way that we don't even yet like fully maybe understand or know. Yeah. Yeah. Right? And yeah. like you just give into that. And I think if you asked people to find a memory where they've experienced that, I think everyone's experienced that if they allow themselves to. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. But, but like most people are so guarded and mm -hmm. so like, nope, 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 don't hurt me, you know? Mm -hmm. And well, like also we, we really tamp down in our, especially in our business society, but we really mm -hmm. tamp down on, um, sexual energy in general, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, which is just, you know, the energy of creativity. Creation. Mm -hmm. It's, it involves curiosity. It involves mm -hmm. inspiration, energy, mm -hmm. drive, mm -hmm. like, um, you know, I would even put sometimes like ambition or motivation falls into mm -hmm. that, but it's a, there's a spark of, um, moving forward with something and something growing mm -hmm. from you and in you. Mm -hmm. And so that's one of these five, you know, uh, Anjani and I, you know, both of us are trained in uh, conscious leadership mm -hmm. and in conscious leadership. And we've talked about this on previous episodes around you know, emotions. There are, you know, we, we like to talk about these five basic emotions. There's joy, mm -hmm. fear, sadness, anger, mm -hmm. and what I say in a first meeting in a corporate setting, it would be desire. Mm -hmm. And desire is a code name for sexual feelings. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I say creative energy, <laughs> creative energy. That's great. I might, I might, I might snag that one. <laughs> um, but this is so, such a basic thing. You know, I taught my son, like when my son was in preschool, I came and taught his class about these five things. And, you know, we talked about mm -hmm. desire and mm -hmm. he wanted a, an emoji for each feeling. Mm -hmm. So for desire, um, we landed on, it's like a spiral. It's like a swirl. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Everything needs an emoji. <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> I guess so. Um, so. So in teams, mm -hmm. sometimes it doesn't feel like what you and I have just described that we mm. often experience with each other. Mm. Um, often we're not, we haven't specifically chosen our teammates. Sometimes we mm -hmm. join an intact team. Sometimes mm -hmm. teammates are brought in. We didn't choose them. Mm -hmm. And what are some of the challenges that people experience on teams in your experience? Mm -hmm. So many, I think the first thing, so, you know, I think we've all heard teams are like the perfect Petri dish for all of your family of origin stuff to just mm -hmm. replay itself. Right? Mm -hmm. I do believe, I do believe that. Um, so I, I, you know, we can say high performing teams, but like, I like, I like the words conscious teams, like conscious teams. Are you guys consciously creating together? And I think the biggest thing that gets in the way is for people who haven't done their work, just facets of your ego, because right. I'm sure you talked about this in prior podcasts, but we all have three core basic human needs, if not a few more the need for approval, the need to belong and the need to, the, the need uh, to feel safe and the need for some level of control. And then you have layers and layers as we're adults, layers and layers and layers of stuff that you've experienced and your mental map of what's safe and unsafe in the world. And so then you get thrown into a dynamic with like eight to 10 other people and all that just plays out in full form. Right? Yes. And it's like we use the word posturing teams posture all the time. Well, why are they posturing? They're posturing because at the end of the day, parts of their ego is, uh, gets rattled and they're scared. Mm -hmm. There's something that they're scared of. Mm -hmm. Right. What is this? Is this related to uh, projection? 
Mm -hmm. Are we projecting those family dynamics onto the team? And we, yeah, it's really within us, but we see it out there. Totally. Mm -hmm. Totally. Totally. So like, I, I like to, as quickly as possible, get teams talking about what it is that they're most scared of. Mm -hmm. So, and, and when you peel back the onion, usually, and you peel it back, peel it back, peel it back, it's always the same stuff. Mm. I'm scared of not being seen. I'm scared of not being liked. I'm scared of not being accepted. I'm scared that you're going to find out that I really don't know my shit. Yeah. You know, like it's the same stuff. Mm -hmm. So there's, there's that imposter syndrome mm -hmm. that definitely shows up. Mm -hmm. So, 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 so common. Mm -hmm. uh, we did an episode on imposter syndrome mm -hmm. recently, and it's, it's one of the ones that my clients uh, have been most impacted by, mm -hmm. I think, because that mm -hmm. universal human experience of I'm pretending mm -hmm. so that I can feel safe and I, mm -hmm. I am scared that you're going to mm -hmm. find out. That was episode cool. 53 and I'll link to that in the show notes. Yeah. Um, but I, so I see that showing up and these family dynamics showing up Yeah. and uh, one of the, you know, I think at, at, there are, there are different stages of teams kind of falling apart mm -hmm. and, you know, for anyone who's been through something like that, it's a, it can be a gut wrenching experience mm -hmm. to have mm -hmm. a team that used to be working together mm -hmm. um fall apart because of all those all those kind of shadowy egoic mm -hmm. projections mm -hmm. that are just part of us being human mm -hmm. totally. um but i feel like the last the final thing that crumbles mm -hmm. uh is trust or sometimes the first thing it's, that i was gonna say if you think it's so the i think final it depends on first i think if you don't have the trust yeah then you can't build up to being a high functioning, high performing team. Yep. Right. Um, if trust gets broken, everything falls apart for sure. But it's totally. in that er eroding process of, hmm, like some, we sort of stop challenging each other. We stop showing up for each other yeah. and we maybe norms get developed and it's not personal. Um, but, but eventually that kind of task related conflict, um, you know, it quickly, quickly falls into now it's personal. Now this is about our relationship. Now this is about you. Mm -hmm. Now mm -hmm. this is about me mm -hmm. and I'm up all night and there's no mm -hmm. trust left. Mm -hmm. well, once there's no let's, trust left, what do you do? But let's talk about trust, yeah. right? It's like, I think trust is such an ambiguous thing and yet it's so easy to, to understand, right? Mm -hmm. It's so big yet so simple. And the, it's a formula, right? Mm -hmm. Like, hmm. There's a couple of things that go into it and it's just so like blatantly obvious, you know, when we, when we talk about it, it's, do I think you're credible for your mm -hmm. job or for your position? The way I see you, do I see you as credible? Are you reliable? So can mm -hmm. I count on you? And are you authentic so that I can have like, mm -hmm. you know, a, a relationship where I don't have to wonder. Mm -hmm. And all of that, can go to not if I think that you are more concerned about you than us, right? So it's, do I think your cred credibility plus reliability plus authenticity divided by my perception of your self-interest? And if that is a zero, everything goes to zero. If I perceive that you're not if I perceive that you care more about you than yeah. you care about us. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So like, think about all the examples and I would invite your listeners to do this too. Think about somebody that you, even, even if it's like your gut screaming at you, like, I don't know if I can trust this person. Mm, yeah. Why? And if mm -hmm. you break it down into those four simple elements, you will, you will see which one of those is being violated for mm. you. And then you have a choice. What do I go do with that? Because mm -hmm. I can sit and stew on that. Mm -hmm. Or this is where another thing that you and I love can be utilized. Clearing. I can go mm -hmm. clear. Mm -hmm. I can go reveal myself. Mm -hmm. I can go find out if this, these stories that I'm holding are actually true or not. 
let's let's give a footnote on on what is a story we have we have a, a whole mm -hmm. episode on fact versus story mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um episode 46 which we'll link to and and also um related to that is is the idea of speaking unarguably mm -hmm. so instead yeah. of claiming my story is truth and it's a fact yeah. can i own can i take ownership that i made up a story mm -hmm. i i keep telling myself a story mm -hmm. um or even I have a story, which is, I, I like that one a little bit less because it, it, it takes less responsibility. Mm -hmm. But I think to have, to be authentic is, it requires a tremendous amount of personal responsibility. Yeah. To be able to, because I'm, it's not authentic um, for me to ignore, you know, who is the one having these thoughts about you or about mm -hmm. us, mm -hmm. it, that's me. I'm mm -hmm. the one having those thoughts. Mm -hmm. It's not a truth that's out there and is objective. Mm -hmm. So where does um, where do dynamics like blame mm -hmm. and uh, judgment where do those fit in to that that trust equation? What can be done about them? Yeah. So let me sit with your question. Dynamics of blame and judgment. So I think. Blame and judgment are outcomes. So if I don't mm. trust you or if something's being violated, like I don't even like saying I don't trust you because mm -hmm. I'd rather get to what part of this is, you know, do I feel unsafe in, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. If I feel unsafe that you're not credible in your role, I'm feeling fear that we're not going to be able to accomplish what we need to accomplish together. I'm feeling fear that I'll, I'll have to take more than 100% responsibility mm -hmm. and take, right? So mm -hmm. then if I sit on that and if I don't reveal, then I'm now losing authenticity because mm -hmm. I'm not, I'm unwilling mm -hmm. to reveal myself. And then I shift below the line and go into blame, mm -hmm. go into resentment, go into criticism. Mm -hmm all of those things. And it can be so subtle. It's so very, very common. Mm -hmm. So one thing I've heard leaders say a lot when there's a, that kind of a situation. So this mm -hmm. person's not good at their job. I don't mm -hmm. trust them. Mm -hmm. I don't trust them. If, if I relied on them, I wouldn't trust it. And I would feel all this fear. So I'm not going to, mm -hmm. uh, I'm not going to listen. I'm not going to heed their words. I'm not gonna listen to what they say. None mm -hmm. of that is wrong. Okay. We, we make assessments of each other's credibility in certain areas and we make our own choices about you know, where we want to um, engage and collaborate and where we don't. Those are mm -hmm. our choices to make. Mm -hmm. um, however, what I've heard as the reason not to have the clearing that you mm -hmm. were talking about earlier mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and not to reveal that authentically mm -hmm. is I just don't want to take the time to do that. I don't I don't have time for mm -hmm. all of the reactivity and drama and like mm -hmm. that person's going to get offended and then we're going to have to talk about that. And mm -hmm. um, how is it possible to um, move forward from there? How do you help teams where that's just such an entrenched dynamic I and mean, it's so, so common? So you gotta make a choice, right? And I think this is where the team leader um, is critical because if the value is placed on, we are only going to win whatever you're winning, trying to win towards, if we are a true team, if we're a first team, then the priority becomes being a team. Mm -hmm. versus mm -hmm. the output of what the team is doing. Like what's actually more important is, are we a team? And there's certain teams that say that. There's certain leaders that say that. They're like, I don't really care. Yeah, you know, it, it, we're not going to sacrifice the business, but I don't really care about the short-term wins if we're not doing it correctly. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. I'm, I'm going to bank on the long-term win, which is going to be so much better and so much richer if we unite as one, you know, mm -hmm. as a first, as a first team, mm -hmm. first team, first team. So first team versus second team or third team. So how many, how many leaders, when we ask them, who's your team? Mm -hmm. They usually okay. will talk about the people who my report team. to them. My team, <laughs> yes. my team, right. <laughs> and you know, what if, and then we say, well, what if that was your second team? What if the first team was the team that you're on? meaning the team that you are are a player on not so the like, team that you lead 
the executive team, the leadership team, the management team, whatever level, whatever the team yeah. that you are a player on with, with other peers people that are peers, mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. that's, that's what you get paid to do. You get paid to lead your team, but really the influence and how you're going to move things forward is this not siloed, you know, parenting. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So uh, what does an organization look like where that is actually what's happening versus mm -hmm. the opposite where people mm -hmm. consider their team to be the team under them? Mm -hmm. I think everything gets discussed at the team that you're on, especially mm -hmm. if it's the executive team, there's alignment there. Mm -hmm. um, people put all their cards on the table. They just don't get held back. Uh, they're not posturing for their team and their wins. They're sharing talent. Mm. Uh, they're not mm -hmm. hoarding. They're mm -hmm. not hoarding their talent. Mm. Um, they're talking. They're, I use the word altitude a lot. They're rising in altitude and talking about the right the right conversations that are mm -hmm. hard. Uh, and they're making decisions together. Yeah. And they're supporting each other. So they're mm -hmm. never saying, well, I didn't really want to do this anyways, but uh, right. right. And it, a, a thread I'm hearing there is they're not competing with each other. Yeah, exactly. So they're not competing with each other. However, at some point, there will be an opportunity to promote someone. Mm -hmm. And there's uh, a budget. Mm -hmm. and allocation happens across mm -hmm. the whole organization mm -hmm. you know and in a family setting this would look like there are a lot of tasks to get done and there's a certain amount of money in the bank and there's mm -hmm. a certain amount of time how do we choose who gets to spend what how do we choose who does what around the house like that coordination of resources is what mm -hmm. i'm referencing here so mm -hmm. how what does that look like in a team where, where people are not competing? Well, if you're not competing, then you're not trying to tear each other down. So what are people making decisions in service of, if not themselves? The business. Yeah. The role, the outcome, the, you know, like in a family setting, who gets, who gets the money? You know, who, who gets, who gets to go buy whatever they want, right? I don't know. Does it have to be that question? Could it be a mm -hmm. different question where it's, what are we trying to create based yeah. on our values? Maybe mm -hmm. none of us spend that money. Mm -hmm. Maybe mm -hmm. the money goes in the bank. Maybe we mm -hmm. go and don't buy anything and maybe we go have an experience together. Yeah. Thing, right. Or as a, as a team, what's the, what's the role? that you know is open and there's only one role and we want to promote from within mm -hmm. well who's the best person for that role mm -hmm. and if you truly looked inside right if you're a conscious team and there's no competition and stuff if you truly looked inside you would be happy if you got it and you would be just as happy if your peer got it mm -hmm. yeah because it's what's most in service yeah of us achieving our mission and realizing that vision yeah so this is this is why vision is just so critically important yeah. Yeah. not just for alignment but also for establishing trust yeah without a clear vision of this is where we're trying to go this is this is that the juiciest carrot hanging out in front of us that we've ever seen in our whole entire lives mm. and we are willing to you know to put that before ourselves because we want it to exist so badly, but we cannot create it on our own. So once that vision is like really set and held and clear, mm -hmm. um, and there's different levels of clarity, we can talk about that in another episode, but mm -hmm. it's clear enough that it actually can unite us without needing to debate each and everything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It removes so many of those um, little windows where competition sneak sneaks in, or um, I don't understand what's happening over there. Mm -hmm. And I think my role is more important than yours. Mm -hmm. um, all of those little chances where trust does begin to crumble once mm -hmm. that sneaks in. Yeah. And sometimes I think vision doesn't actually have to be 
the vision that inspires you doesn't have to be the vision of the company that you're part of. Hmm. Say more. I think sometimes it's totally great and totally okay. Not okay. Great. <laughs> <laughs> if the vision that you're aspiring to is the vision of the team, like the collective, mm -hmm. right? like you and I, I don't, mm -hmm. do I really care uh, about going and like, doing more work together and the work, the work itself and yeah. like achieving that I do when I think about being in service of my clients. Mm -hmm. Right. And why I spend time doing what I do. I don't, as it relates to you and I. So interesting. The vision for you and I is just this energy exchange that this craziness that you and I have. Right. Yeah. And that, that is what the vision is mm -hmm. not the output of what we do. Yes. Does that make sense? It completely makes sense. Completely. Yeah. And I, and I can see how that applies to companies as well, that we have a vision of becoming um, this kind of a company. Yeah. Um, it's not just about the product we're putting out in the world or our innovations yeah. or our stock yeah. price, you know, yeah, God forbid. Um, it's about the kind of company we want to be, you know, to put a mark on the world and to to hold this container of human beings who's who cares yeah. about it. Yeah, um, or I care so much about the people that I work with mm -hmm. and I learn so much from them. I love being in community with them. Mm -hmm. So it goes back to right? who do we want to be, not just yeah. what do we want to do. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, totally. Being 100%. not doing. Uh, Anjani, I, I love, um, skimming around all these all these mm -hmm. topics about teams and i feel like uh in this episode today what's really coming through for me is the just the critical humanness of teamwork mm -hmm. and how fundamental it is and how worth it it is for us to lean into any challenges that we face in teamwork because mm -hmm. of how critical that learning is for us as humans mm -hmm. like there's um you know just you have such a vibe like a healer vibe and mm -hmm. i really um i really see that happening you know mm -hmm. with the people that we work with is there's a real opportunity to have like a reconciliation with some of your deepest wounds mm -hmm. and some of your mm -hmm. biggest insecurities and mm -hmm. um so i really really appreciate you and your way of understanding the world and how much love you put into being of mm. service. And thank you thank so you. much for being here today. Can I say one more thing? You betcha. For teams that are not business teams, like family teams, I think one of the most important things is the same vision that you're talking about. Mm. Who do we want to be mm. as an entity, as a family, like the most important team. And like we, I have two little kids and from a really early, early stage, like I think they were like three or something, we created family values mm -hmm. of like who we wanted to show up in the world as. And I did it just kind of like, as I was probably frustrated about some, something they were doing, I just like wrote it out, but it, it's simple. And it's just like what we would do in an organization. Like it's the culture of our family mm -hmm. and it's simple. It's protect my body protect my, uh, or no, respect my body, respect my earth, respect my parents, mm. respect my friends and respect my house. Mm. Wow. It's so simple. Mm. Right. And we're, we're always checking each other on that. And then mm. above that sits like a, you know, team Bargava. Who do we like, who do we want to be in this world? Like what's our purpose? Mm. But like those values are so critical and it, it's like the binding force, right? Like, and when, when I hope when, when my girls, you know, are released into the world, mm -hmm. right, they will forever, like this is their root system. Mm. Oh, that's so beautiful. Thank you. So, <sighs> you know, we can talk about teams in any capacity yeah. and like families are our teams. Yeah. Um, and families have culture, <laughs> you know, the, the, not Certainly. the, the religious or the, the social culture, but the, the culture of the entity. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So 100%. Um, 
So Anjani, if our listeners want to get in touch with you about coaching or teamwork or any of the executive and cultural development work you do, what's the best way for them to follow you and find you? Um, I'm going through a website refresh right now. So the Woo-hoo. best the best thing is to find me on LinkedIn mm-hmm. or through the Evolution website. Great. So that's evolution.team. Mm-hmm. And uh, LinkedIn, we'll put a... We'll, we'll put a link to Anjani's LinkedIn profile into the show notes so that you can get in touch with her and follow her and um, hear an announcement when, when the new website's ready. I'm excited for that. And also mm-hmm. I've been through that before and that's a, oh. woo. Yeah. <laughs> it's a doozy. Yeah. Talk about ego work. Woo. Um, um, yeah. So great. Thank you so much for being here today. Uh, listeners, uh, Anjani is one of the, the types of coaches who is going to be invited to offer uh, live interactive coaching sessions to you. All you need to do is join our brand new membership and you can learn more about that at, uh, sorry, allowedpodcast.com or keneal.com slash yes, C-A-N-E-E-L slash yes. Link to that is in the show notes. And if you enroll very soon, uh, you have an opportunity to become a founding member, Uh, lock in your price for life, and really have a big hand in co-creating and shaping the culture of that growing community. So I really hope that you can join us for that and get to have some live coaching with me, um, with the others who listen to the show and care about the things you do, and with other brilliant coaches such as Anjani herself. So I will invite you to that and uh, get in touch with you soon. Thank you so much for being here today and taking the time to share your wisdom and your heart and listeners, uh, whenever you take time to invest in yourself, your own personal exploration and discovery, mm-hmm. your own growth, you really are doing something good for the world and the world of people around you. And you're doing something good for yourself. So give yourself a little connection love um, is, is so critically important as we talked about today. So thank you for being connected and we'll see you next week. Bye-bye.